Afre, welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Peter Santos. Glad you could join us. The contract is awarded for the Department of Corrections Master Plan Information to Energy. Just finish up the first of many on-site visits and have determined they will be ramping up efforts to complete the 14-phase project by this summer. KOM's Adriana Cotero speaks with President of Information to Energy, David Rogers. After being back here and spending time and now having the jail situation added in, uh, we've had to ramp up, uh, so I've canceled almost all my other projects. Information to Energy President David Rogers is clearing his schedule to ensure the Aganya Detention Facility is cleared in a timely fashion. And this means finishing up the Department of Corrections Master Plan's 14-point strategy within the next six months. The Master Plan will design the necessary upgrades our prison has been in desperate need of. This includes merging the Aganya facility into the Manilao compound. We're still at the beginning early stages, but we've come a long way. From, from when we got the grant to the RFP process to getting the contract signed and now Mr. Rogers and them actually doing the work. Rogers and his team started the work several months ago and they are currently in the process of developing the comprehensive document. That document, one of the most important parts of the document will be the functional specification. The functional specification will then be used and turned over to an architect and an architect will begin the actual detailed layout of the uh, property and the buildings. And a significant improvement to the prison's design. One of the key things about the design of this prison will be that it, uh, it's going to get it away from the road and a lot of the contraband issues, we're really going to clamp mm. it down. We're really going to clamp it down pretty good with this design. Aiming to minimize the contraband entering the prison and also plans to design a much more robust medical, dental and psychological ward to accommodate the larger population as a result of combining the detention facility with the prison. Rogers says another building to be eliminated are the domes. If you look at the four domes we have over here, these are just tents. Looks like tent city. And so when mm -hmm. the time comes, they have to move the people out of there. They have to truly overload the existing buildings. We want to eliminate that. The domes are going to go. And so what we're going to have then is we're going to have buildings that are designed for people to stay where they're supposed to be, be comfortable, have backup generators, water, all this kind of thing. And it's going to be a much better environment for prisoners and safety for them too. Rogers has done prior work on Guam for the past 24 years. He says he's completed nearly six master plan type projects for various Gov Guam agencies. And during this first on-site visit of DOC, he shares this initial reaction. First thing I look at is people. People are the heart, they're the blood, they're everything. And I'm impressed. You've got a strong team here. The people have been here for many years. They work together as a team. They support each other. They seem to do the right things. On the other end of the scale, uh, the buildings are in just horrific condition. They're in bad shape in so many areas. Not all the buildings. There's some buildings that are in very good shape, and they've taken a lot of care. They put a lot of work into keeping those buildings in shape. But they're beyond. They're basically beyond useful life. And we've got to get the we've got to get the people out of there. We've got to get them into a, a better facility. It's a little more humane. A little more movement. A little more light and uh, a lot more education to help prepare them so that they feel confident they can go out. And this mirrors his ultimate goal. I was asked a question by the director before I came out here about six months ago, I think it was. He said, what's, what's the number one goal would you like to see come out of this? And I think they were talking about better ratios of people and the living conditions and all stuff. I said, no, no, the number one goal I see is I don't want to see anybody ever return back to this place. Rogers, his partner Tom Parker, and their team will be returning back on island on March 15th. He says this session will include a thorough investigation of the electrical and mechanical work, with a civil engineer to check for structural issues of the existing buildings. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Shady cops, police, and customs officers' involvement in Guam's drug world, marshals vacating warrants in exchange for bribes, physical abuse by public safety officers. These are just a few of the public corruption allegations made in the District Court of Guam. An oversight hearing with the Judiciary of Guam has already been scheduled by Speaker Therese Terlahi, and now the Committee of Public Safety is taking steps to look into the allegations. Chairman Peter Terlahi addressed a letter to the Guam Police Department Chief Steve Ignacio requesting he launch a multi-agency internal affairs investigation. However, Senator Terlahi has deferred the overseeing of these operations to his colleague, Vice Chair Frank Bloss, Jr. Today, I'm, I'm actually having a um, meeting with my staff uh, uh, to lay out, uh, first off, um, you know, what course of action can we take, recognizing that we have 
in government, we have our own role. We don't have, I'm, I don't have no intentions means of, of crossing over, nor do I want to, uh, to be able to, I mean, to take part or, 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 or to be an impediment or, or, or to, to pry into, you know, ongoing criminal, ongoing investigations, if there are. Okay. Um, so there's a very fine line to be able to, that, that I'm, I'm going to have to make sure that I stay on my side of it. Senator Pito Terlahi's son, former deputy of the Department of Corrections, Joey Terlahi, has been named more than once as having a role in these accusations. During the FBI case agent's testimony, it was, it was revealed that Joey Terlahi was allegedly at a barbecue with federal offender former Zonia Mayor Jesse Bloss, where he beat a woman, held her hostage for multiple days. Senator Blas has yet to schedule an oversight hearing with any local law enforcement agencies. Just because it's recognized as a cultural practice doesn't mean it's going to fly. Animal Wellness Action's Wayne Pacelli gave his reaction to the recent passing of Puga's Law, also known as the Paws Act. Here's more. The Protecting Animal Welfare and Safety Act, also known as Puga's Law, got the governor's signature and is now public law. Animal Wellness Action founder Wayne Pacelli says the law's passage is a big step forward for the island. Well, I think it's just an outstanding development. This is a very strong anti-cruelty statute. It upgrades uh, Guam's law against animal cruelty. Uh, it bans bestiality. It strengthens the law against dog fighting. It deals with neglect. It really makes it one of the top 10 anti-cruelty statutes in the United States. If you think of the 50 states and six territories, uh, this really puts Guam in an enviable position. Pacelli says that getting tough on animal abuse gets to the roots of bigger issues that plague our communities. There is so much evidence of a link between malicious animal cruelty and then other forms of social violence. Uh, people who do these terrible things to animals, maybe a person who uh, harms a spouse or a child, uh, commits some other intolerable act against the person. So this is not an issue of just helping animals, which alone would warrant the action. This is really about decency and about uh, really identifying people who are a danger to all of us. A provision introduced by Senator Pito Terlahi was made before the bill left the session floor and it recognized cockfighting as a cultural practice on Guam. But Pacelli says you can recognize it all you want, but it still ain't going to happen. It's just something that is a, is a, a show and an act uh, by the senator who did it. It has zero legal effect. Zero. But I do feel that some people may think, oh, well, this provision is in the law and therefore I can go cockfighting. That is not true. This is a federal felony. You can go to jail for 15 or 20 years. Every single count in the federal law and one animal being involved as one count is up to five years in jail. Senator Pito Terlahi's office issued this statement in response. Quote, Cockfighting remains legal under Guam law, and while it is prohibited by the federal government, local law enforcement does not have to aid federal law enforcement in any way to enforce this federal law. Aiding in this enforcement by law is the lowest priority of the government of Guam. Only when we've solved every other problem in Guam will we even think about helping to enforce it. Wayne Pacelli says that he knows the people of Guam better than we know our people. He says that he knows the people of Guam are against cockfighting without setting foot on this island. I invited him to come debate me at the cockfighting dome in Dedido to meet the people of Guam, but he's too chicken to debate. This ban was imposed upon us without our consent and without our voting representation. Where's the democracy in that? Where's the human rights in that? It was imposed on us by people who have never been here, who don't respect the Chamorro people, and who don't respect our culture. Don't go sticking your silver spoons in our chumpalado. Chamorro culture belongs to the Chamorro people and no outsider will dictate our culture to us, end quote. According to Pacelli, regardless, under federal law, an individual can be fined up to $250,000 per violation. I really hope that political leaders, having taken this really strong affirmative action to make animal cruelty a felony offense on Guam, recognize, even if they think that cockfighting is okay, that they recognize what the law says. The, the Congress has acted, the courts have affirmed it, the people of Guam have said they agree with it. The Guam Housing and Urban Renewal Authority is currently working on a pilot program to bring solar energy to the underserved communities of Guam. The program is set to take place at Guma Tranquilidad in Tuman. Currently, Gura covers all res residential utilities there. Gura Executive Director Ray Tapasha says they're excited about the partnership, adding, quote, 
we trust that there will be a significant cost savings for Gura that we may be able to apply towards improving the quality of lives for Amanumku. Gura hopes to have about 53 structures rely almost entirely on solar power when the project is completed. Stay tuned next on Weekend Edition, we have trend spotting and still to come, the Guam Crime Stoppers report. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cowboys Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. Welcome back to the weekend. Right now, we're gonna take a look at this week's biggest stories from the details of the suspect who struck a group of people in Dededo, including the mayor, to a blaze that has left a family of seven homeless. I'm Tyler Matinani, and here's your trend spotting report. First up, an arrest was made earlier this week in the auto pedestrian crash that sent five people to the hospital, including Dededo Mayor Melissa Savarez. 34-year-old Samuel Jr. Duenas Griffin was charged with vehicular negligence, driving while impaired, and possession of opened container in a motor vehicle. Griffin told police he had been drinking beer that morning, and the night before, he tried meth for the first time. That afternoon, he had passed out while driving and awoke in the hospital. The mayor, along with several GovGuam employees from different agencies, were in the area conducting a tree inspection near Benevente Middle School when Griffin's car ran off the roadway and struck them. According to court documents, Griffin told police, quote, I'll man up to my mistakes and try to make it right. God, I'm so sorry they got hurt. Turning to your comments, Alex Velez said, no way it is first time. Got plenty of sores on his face, guarantee he was up for days, then just passed out behind the wheel. And Anarbo Moreno said, you need help, brother. Keeping the crime news, Anthony Ignacio was arrested for his part in an agate shooting that sent one man to the hospital. On Monday, police responded to the shooting along San Francisco Street, where the victim was rushed to Naval Hospital with gunshot wounds. Court documents state Ignacio was the driver in a vehicle with the shooter in the passenger seat. There was a fight between the victims and the suspect, and a witness allegedly heard Ignacio yelling at his passenger to, quote, blast him par. Anthony Ignacio was arrested for two counts conspiracy for murder, aggravated assault, criminal facilitation, and guilt established by complicity. His lawyer, however, is alleging he was defending himself under the Castle Doctrine law, since the victim was allegedly striking the vehicle with a stick before the shooting. The victim is listed in stable conditions as of Friday. Police were searching for the alleged shooter. Chiming in, Margaret Powell 7373 said, So glad you caught the guy. And Ashley Cruz James shared, Prayers the victim makes a speedy recovery. Turning to nationwide news that's touched our shores, Guam resident Charles Thomas Polvich was arrested in the hit and run death of singer Nicki Minaj's father. Last week, 64 year old Robert Mirage was allegedly struck by Polvich in New York. According to police, after hitting the victim, Polvich got out of his car to look at the injured man and then took off. Mirage later died of his injuries. Polvich has been charged with leaving the scene of a crash and tampering with evidence. He is the owner and founder of Allied Pacific Environmental Consulting. And more sad news this week, a raging fire has left a family of seven, including five children without a home. One of the victims' mother described how the fire got started. 
It started up where he was burning a uh, egg carton for the mosquito. And I uh, guess with the wind being strong, uh, it kind of like blew the flame towards the other house and it's, uh, it's when he's trying to, try to stop the fire, he, he couldn't because the wind was so strong. It happened so fast where it was out of control already. She said the family stayed overnight in a tent and car on the grounds of their home, and along with all their belongings in the tin structure, the family also lost two vehicles. On social media, lots of you were asking how to help this family in need. The Dededo Mayor's Office is accepting donations for the Santos family at the Senior Center from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. through next week. The five children are between the ages of 5 to 11 years old, and the family is in need of food, household items, and clothing. If you would like to donate directly to the family, contact Josefa Santos at 678-6230 or Jeanine Cruz at 671-583-9580. And in news many of us have been waiting for, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero declared the island would be returning to PCOR 3. We all had been anticipating the announcement earlier this week as bars prepare to reopen and tourism also is expected to revive in April. Guam has continued to maintain a low car score over the last several weeks, typically below one, and hospitalizations and infections also remain low. Vaccinations also continue to push through the community with clinics happening at the village level. We took a poll and asked if you thought we're ready to move into PCOR 3. 40% of you said yes, while a majority at 60% said no. And your comments reflected that too. Mark Snyder said, whoa, I don't think she's been watching the news. There are seven new variants in the US, not a good idea to open up yet. What's more important, money or lives? Zasa Rapain when Seslau says, good. Come on, people, we need to adapt to the new normal. Start from yourself, proper hygiene, bathe every day, wear masks, wash hands, watch distance, take vitamins and supplements. We need to practice the new normal before our economy will kill us all. And just a little toss down south where you can declare your love and help the San Dimas Catholic Church, Kisses in Malesu will allow you to purchase a wooden kiss at $5 with the name of a loved one and post it on their display wall. Continue to woo your loved one across the street at the kissing booth next to the heart of Malesu, take some pictures, and make some Valentine's memories this year. Kisses in Malesu is available every Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. in February. Yes, we're heading into a new normal, and I'm sure many of us are eager to get back out and party, but regardless of what stage of pandemic condition we're in, we must remember to stay safe, stay clean, watch our distance, and wear a mask. Until next time, adios! It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen too.